Hey there, if you're curious about these Sherlock connectors from Amphenol, I've got some great information here for you. So what I'm holding here are the 10.3 millimeter versions of these Amphenol Sherlock connectors. Uh, I've got this, which is the bus bar receptacle type. And then over here is the right angle crimp style connector. And uh, these go together. You just plug in there. And then once you hear that click, they are locked in place. They don't rotate anymore and they cannot pull out. However, there's a little button here. If you press that button, then the assembly unlocks and can be disconnected. They're a very tight fit. Uh, these are waterproof connectors uh, when they're coupled together. Uh, the other thing is that when you first make that connection, you can rotate these any way you would like to. And then as soon as you hear that click, uh, then they are locked in place at whatever angle you want to. You can see that there's a little end there. So you can basically lock these connectors together at any one of those angles. So I don't know how many that is, but let's say every 10 degrees or so. One of the questions that I had with these particular uh, connectors was what's called the keyway. And so I want you to focus right here. So if you see where my finger is, you can see that there's a little notch and then there's another large notch off to the side there. These two notches have to align with the two notches right here and right here uh, in order for this connection to work. So when you're purchasing the connector, you have to say where you want these keyways. And so this happens to be the 90 degree opposed keyway because you can see one there and there at 90 degree uh, apart. However, here is a different connector and you can see that it is not at 90 degrees. It is at 180. So there's a little nub there and a little nub there. And if you try to plug these two connectors in, uh, well, obviously it is not going to work because those do not match up. And so you have to align those keyways. So if you've got the keyways here and you've got the keyways here, when those line up, will snap together. And if you want, this little end rotates. So this is how they get the 360 degree movement out of it. The plug side uh, doesn't rotate, it's locked into place. But so long as you get those things lined up, and then once it's locked, you're good. And so yeah, it doesn't have to be at any particular angle there. Well, um, within 10 degrees or so then just press the button. Uh, if you press the button and pull it out just a little bit, then you can rotate this and then plug it back together. Press the button and it comes. Uh, now included with all of the uh, connectors here, by the way, you can get these in either a 90 degree connector like this, or you can get it in a, a straight through version. In all of those cases, uh, you can order it with the two backing pieces which you're gonna need these two things. So I think it's gonna be easiest for me to show you how this connector goes together by actually putting one together for you. So what I've done is I've created a little test piece of cable here. So the first thing you have to do in building the cable is to put this on, okay? And then the second thing is to take the little waterproof piece. and The cable goes through there. And this is a pretty tight fit around the cable. You can twist this up. So there we go. So there we go. Uh, the next thing you do is put the little ferrule crimp end on. And then lastly, you're going to take the final piece and your crimp goes into there. Now, this is the point where you actually crimp the connector. And so you're gonna get one of the big hydraulic crimpers and you wanna crimp right around there. As far as I can tell, the reason they have a ferrule on here is so that they can use the same main connector piece and then you just swap out the little ferrule end, the little crimp end for different wire gauges. So you can get the same thing uh, in a one gauge and it will just have a slightly thicker piece here on the end. 
So then these go together and you crimp those down. Then this piece comes up and over like that, all right? And then this piece comes on Uh, so there you go, then your cable is all put together. You just take your cable, take your end, make sure to match up the keyways, and then plug it in. There you go. And this particular one I think is rated for 350 amps. Let's now take a look at the data sheet for the Sherlock Plus connectors to help you find what you're looking for. I'll link the data sheet in the description. The first bit of technical information you'll want to reference contains a listing of all of the connection sizes. And in this video, I'm showing the 10.3 millimeter version capable of handling up to 350 amps at 100 volts. This is the maximum continuous rating of the connector so they can actually handle short bursts of even higher current. Moving to the dimensions of the receptacle. You can see that all of the dimensions for the different receptacle types are listed for each connector size so that you can determine which one will work for your application. Importantly, they also show the ordering information and all of the options available so that you can buy the right version. I'm using a receptacle with keyway, 10.3 millimeters, bus bar, with a flange, with ceiling, in orange, and with a 90 degree keyway. That means I have the SLP IRC BPSO0. The next page contains the same information for the plug side of the connector. You can see that they show the dimensions for the right angle plug and straight plug. Similarly to how I found the receptacle for the plug, I'm using the right angle style, 10.3 millimeters, 70 millimeter squared, which is two aught cable, with the back shells with ceiling, in orange, and with a 90 degree keyway. That means I have the SLP PC70 BSO0. You can then look these model numbers up on Mouser or DigiKey to order them. Pricing is likely to change, but in mid-2023, you can see the receptacle is about $25 and the plug is about $30. Keep in mind that if you want to take a single wire from one place to another, you'll need two pairs of connectors. And you'll need four pairs to do a positive and negative connection, which is over $200 just in connectors. I hope you found this information helpful. I use these connectors in my 1981 DeLorean EV conversion, which you can check out in my Project Lightning playlist.